It's little surprise that so many TV shows end up going off the rails creatively at one point or another, considering the sheer hours of content which must be produced and the huge number of creative collaborators who typically work on a given series. And while there are countless stories of once great TV shows dive-bombing in their later years, there are also those series which sidestep some potentially fan-base annihilating subplots and storylines that nobody actually wanted to see. These 10 TV series, while hardly perfect in of themselves, all at least had the good sense to throw out these extremely risky, unwanted and downright wrong storylines. Whether for practical reasons or because it just didn't suit the type of story the showrunners were trying to sell. Each of these subplots would have undeniably cast a dark cloud over their respective series, rather than allowing fans to simply soak in the escapism, be it a comedic or dramatic. Had these stories been allowed to play out, all of these TV shows would have been forever changed for the worst. I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 10 ditch TV storylines that thankfully never happened. Number 10 Jim and Pam break up temporarily in the final season. The Office. The US version of The Office is in many ways defined by the series' long love story between Jim, played by John Krasinski, and Pam, played by Jenna Fisher, which climaxes with the happily married couple finally moving on from Dunder Mifflin in the series finale. But the recently released book, The Office, The Untold Story of the Greatest Sitcom of the 2000s, reveals that the call was almost made to have the pair break up in the show's ninth and final season, albeit only temporarily. Showrunner Greg Daniels clearly sowed the seeds for the split with Jim's commute to Philadelphia, straining their marriage and Pam growing closer to documentary boom mic operator Brian, though ultimately opted not to pull the two apart mid-season as he initially planned, ahead of a reunion in the series finale. Curiously, one of the cheerleaders for the subplot was John Krasinski himself, who said it would really be interesting to see how that split would affect two people that you know so well. But executive producer Brent Forrester ultimately explained that it would just be too painful for fans of the show. Considering how this would have felt just like a desperate attempt to prolong the series' sense of drama and needlessly throw a last-minute soap opera wrench into Jim and Pam's relationship, it was definitely the right decision not to go ahead with it. Number 9. Terry Bauer Survives 24 one of the most shocking moments in the entirety of 24 was the death of Jack Bowers, Kiefer Sutherland's pregnant wife Terry, played by Leslie Hope, at the hands of double agent Nina Myers, played by Sarah Clark, in their first season's final episode. It so perfectly cemented the show's anything goes unpredictability, but things almost went another way completely. The showrunners weren't entirely sure of committing to Terry's death, so an alternate ending was filmed where Jack and his daughter Kim reunite with Terry safe and sound. Thankfully, the braver choice won out in the end. Given that Terry's death defined Jack's journey throughout the rest of the show as well as his relationship with Kim, ultimately named her own daughter Terry in her mother's honour, keeping her and her unborn child alive would have made 24 a very different beast indeed. With Jack bereaved of wife and child, he became a brilliantly punished, tortured character, and had his family life been more stable, it's tough to imagine he would have been able to go to those extreme places, namely taking up a heroin addiction to maintain his deep cover dramatically. Number 8. Ross's girlfriend Elizabeth becomes pregnant. Friends. There are many proposed Friends storylines that were ditched over the years, yet none more sensibly than the initial plan to have Ross's young college student girlfriend Elizabeth announce her pregnancy at the end of season 6. The seventh season would have been focused on the fallout of this revelation, before the season finale delivered the twist that the baby wasn't actually his. The writers ultimately ditched the plot because they were already gearing up for Rachel's pregnancy reveal at the end of season 7. And from a viewer standpoint, it would have felt pretty cheap to string the audience along for an entire season for a cheap rug pull, especially given the already iffy ground that Ross and Elizabeth's relationship was standing on. Even for Friends, this would have been way too melodramatic. Number 7. Inara has a terminal illness. Firefly. Joss Whedon fans are well aware of just how much he loves to put his characters through the ringer, and while Firefly's Inara Sarah was hardly one of the show's most beloved heroes, Whedon nevertheless planned an intensely grim fate for her. In 2008, it was revealed by Maureen and Baccarin that Whedon actually wrote Inara as suffering from a terminal illness, though given the short-lived nature of the series, this was ultimately never able to play out. 
thankfully. While Firefly went to some incredibly dark places throughout its brief run, did anyone really want to see Inara slowly dying over the course of several seasons, especially given her tentative romance with Mal? Though there are certainly hints to Inara's condition in retrospect, the syringe, her telling Simon, I don't want to die at all, it was definitely a smart choice for Whedon to play this subplot as coy as he did. Number 6. Liz adopts a 12 year old boy in season 2. 30 Rock. At the end of 30 Rock's second season, Liz Lemon announces that she's ready to have a child, resulting in an adoption arc throughout the show's third season, which is mysteriously nixed by the time season 4 begins. The original plan was for Liz to adopt a 12 year old boy at the end of season 2, though the adoption would ultimately be called off after the boy stole from her and vanished. Nevertheless, the storyline wasn't cancelled for any creative reason, but simply because NBC reneged on their original promise to heavily promote the lead up to it on their network. The writers promptly threw it out, and after the adoption plot fizzled, it wasn't returned to until near the end of the show's run, with Liz and Chris adopting two children in the series finale. Hilariously though, the sudden abandonment of the adoption plot lightly mocked it in the season 5 episode Operation Righteous Cowboy Lightning, where Kenneth says to Liz, I couldn't put the memo in your mailbox because it's full of unread adoption materials. Brilliant. All in all, saddling Liz with an adolescent, even for just a few episodes, would have been one sitcommy step too far. The fact that the adoption plot petered out over the course of season 3 really just compounded that it was just the right call. Number 5. Veronica joins the FBI. Veronica Mars. Shortly after Veronica Mars third season aired, its cancellation was confirmed to the heartbreak of its loyal legion of fans. However, its last ditch attempt to save the show from being cancelled, creator Rob Thomas already filmed a 12 minute teaser for a proposed fourth season which was included on the season 3 DVD set. The teaser revealed that season 4 would take place 4 years after the third, where Veronica, now working at the FBI's LA field office, resulting in most of the show's ensemble cast being replaced with new cast members. Ultimately, fan response to the teaser was mixed, with many seeing Thomas' shift away from the established characters as a desperate attempt to keep the show alive. Despite the cancellation, Veronica Mars did eventually get a 2014 feature film and an actual fourth season last year, neither of which followed up the chintz FBI angle and instead kept the focus primarily on the existing cast. Granted, season 4 was also divisively received, in large part because many original cast members were absent, but ripping Veronica and fans entirely out of their element and making her work for the feds would have just left an incredibly sour taste. Number 4. Elaine points a gun at herself. Seinfeld. Though Seinfeld was widely praised for its ambitious and boundary pushing take on the sitcom formula, there's one planned plot that was simply too challenging for the writers to crack. The Bet was an ultimately unproduced season 2 episode in which Elaine buys a gun off the black market and then mockingly points it at herself while goading Jerry. Worse still, the script had Elaine make distasteful remarks about two assassinated American presidents, pointing the gun at her head and calling it a Kennedy before aiming at the stomach and dubbing it a McKinley. Julia Lewis Dreyfus and the episode's hired director, Tom Chirones, both objected to Larry Charles' script, resulting in the entire episode ultimately being scrapped despite sets already being built and supporting actors being cast. Charles later said of the episode's failure, you know, it would have been an interesting show, but we couldn't solve the funny problem of it. It never seemed to quite be as funny as it should be, and because of that, the balance was off and the darkness kind of enveloped it. So it was disappointing, but also understandable. The episode was eventually replaced with the acclaimed The Phone Message, which Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld wrote in just two days. Number 3. Sam has a HIV scare. Cheers. The original plan for Cheers' season 6 finale was to reveal that one of protagonist Sam Malone's ex-girlfriends had been diagnosed with HIV, leaving viewers to ponder whether Sam himself may have been stricken with the virus ahead of the season 7 premiere. Ultimately, those plans were handedly scuppered, however, by the 1988 Writers Guild of America strike, which resulted in the episode's scheduled shoot being delayed and creator Les Charles ultimately deciding during rehearsals that the plot killed the episode's comedic momentum. While it's admirable enough that Cheers even considered addressing one of the most topical issues of the 1980s, it just would have been too much of a cruel, jarring bummer to deal this hand to Sam, no matter his womanising ways. Number 2. Jesse Dies in Season 1 Breaking Bad 
In the history of sensibly aborted TV storylines, there aren't many more fortuitously curtailed than Vince Gilligan's original plan to have co-lead Jesse Pinkman killed off at the end of the first season. Gilligan conceived to have Jesse die during a botched drug deal, that the intent that Walt would then be plagued with guilt. But by the time the second episode of the season had been filmed, Gilligan changed his mind due to Paul's performance and chemistry with Cranston, as well as the general development of the character. Gilligan rightly said it became pretty clear early on that it would be a huge, colossal mistake to kill off Jesse. Given that Jesse became the heart and soul of Breaking Bad, killing him would have been one of the most disastrous creative missteps in the last 20 years of prestige TV. Number 1. The Doctor Meets J.K. Rowling Doctor Who Before the concept for Doctor Who's 2008 Christmas special episode The Next Doctor was finalised, writer Russell T. Davies attempted to bring Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling aboard for a one-off appearance where she'd play herself. The episode would have seen Rowling's magical creations come to life on the streets of Edinburgh, with the Doctor, played by David Tennant, forced to help her bring the situation under control. Ultimately, the idea was scrapped because David Tennant, who appeared in the Potter movie series as Barty Crouch Jr., wasn't much fussed about it, feeling that it would have caused Doctor Who to descend into a full-out spoof. That's not to ignore the colossal legal minefield of having Harry Potter character designs appear in Doctor Who. Above all else, this would have just felt like the most pandering, self-indulgent fan service imaginable, so it was probably for the best. And that's our list. What are your thoughts on these ditched storylines? Leave us a comment below and let us know. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. But for now, I have been Kirsten from More Culture, and I will see you in the next video.